Hello, and welcome to part two of my Language Reactor Masterclass series. Today, you'll discover how to use dictionaries and easily add your favorite ones to the free version of Language Reactor. I have languagereactor.com opened, but don't worry, I'll show you the process on the extension later in the video. Before adding new dictionaries, let's check out the ones that come pre-installed by visiting the media section. Let's open a video by clicking on it. Next, click on a word. Dictionaries can be found in the right pane. Four are pre-installed. They are Glosby, Wiktionary, Babla, and Word Reference. Once we install our own dictionaries, they will also appear here. Above the dictionaries, there's also a very useful mini dictionary that includes the parts of speech. Below the dictionaries, you'll find examples of usage that include sentences mined from Totoba. If you want, you can visit Totoba to explore the word further using the convenient link. I'll click on it, and there is the page related to Ga on Totoba. Let's go back to Language Reactor now. To use a dictionary, click on a word, Jean. and then click on the dictionary you want to use. I'll choose Babla. And there it is. All dictionaries, including the ones we install ourselves, will work in the same way. I'll close the dictionary now. Let's head over to the Settings menu now and install our first dictionary. Scroll all the way to the bottom. I'll start with the Chinese dictionary. Afterward, I'll also show you how to add dictionaries for languages that use the Latin alphabet. It's slightly different. Let's open a new browser window. And we'll head over to Baidu Translate. I'll ask it to translate the word ni hao for me. Next, we'll copy the URL. I'll paste it into a note for a closer look. Do you see all the numbers and percent signs? This happened because we're using a character-based language rather than one that uses the Latin alphabet. To correctly display characters, computers assign unique numbers to each character. This system is known as Unicode in the computing world. It's used not just for Chinese, but also for all character-based languages like Japanese, Hindi, Arabic, Korean, and others. To use this URL in Language Reactor, we need to replace the Unicode with WORD in all caps. The Unicode includes the percent symbols, the letters, and numbers. In the case of Chinese, don't delete any symbols other than percent signs. For example, do you see the AND symbol in our URL? That will stay put. Here are the adjustments I made. Once you understand it, it's not difficult. Why do you need to look up a word and then change the URL? The main URL of a dictionary and the URL when you look up a word are different. By replacing the word you looked up with WORD in all caps, Language Reactor can look up any word you click on. Now let's head back to Language Reactor and paste our updated URL into the My Dictionary URLs box. Notice what happens here after I paste the URL. Do you see the U1 next to the list of dictionaries? It stands for User1 Dictionary. Currently, there's no way to assign unique names to your dictionaries. Let's briefly switch to the Media section to see the Baidu Dictionary in action. I'll click on a word and then click on U1. And there is the word translated using Baidu. Simple, right? I'll close Baidu and return to the settings menu. If you're using a language that uses the Latin alphabet, like Spanish, it's easier to identify what to replace in the URL. I visited Google Translate off screen and looked up the Spanish word hola. Take a look at the URL I copied. Hola is clearly visible. We need to replace hola with word in all caps. This enables Language Reactor to look up any word you click on. Take a look at my revised URL here. Finally, paste the revised URL into the Dictionaries box. I won't demonstrate that again. Instead, let's add two more dictionaries to Language Reactor. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the Settings menu. 
In addition to Baidu, I enjoy using Youglish and Papago for Chinese translations. I'll paste the revised URLs for those dictionaries into the dictionary URLs box. You can see U2 and U3 have appeared in my dictionaries list. Now I can use all three dictionaries with Language Reactor. I just need to remember their order so I can quickly find the one I want without endless clicking. If you're learning Chinese or Spanish, I've included all dictionary URLs I used in this video in the description below for easy access. If you have a dictionary you enjoy, regardless of the language, share your working URLs in the comments below. I'll add them to a pinned comment for everyone's benefit. I've encountered two issues with the User Dictionaries feature in Language Reactor. First, Despite being signed in, my dictionaries disappear from time to time. So save a copy of your dictionary URLs somewhere convenient in case this happens to you. Secondly, you would expect LanguageReactor.com's settings to sync with its extension when you're signed in. However, at the time of this recording, they don't. So you'll need to enter your dictionary's URLs both here on the website and in the extension. When I say extension, I'm referring to using Language Reactor directly on Netflix or YouTube, not LanguageReactor.com. Now let's head over to YouTube to see where to place your dictionary URLs. I've already chosen a video. Click on the settings gear in the upper right. Now let's copy and paste the URLs we saved earlier in the video. And click close. To use the dictionaries, click on a word and then on the dictionary you'd like to use. And there is my word on Youglish. I'll exit out of the dictionary now. We'll explore using Language Reactor on YouTube later in this series. Now, let's head over to Netflix. The screen is black on the left because Netflix doesn't allow screen recordings of its content. However, we can still see the parts of the screen we need. The good news is that since we're still using the extension, Language Reactor remembers the dictionaries we saved when using YouTube. But let's see where adding dictionaries is located. Click on Settings, and you can see the dictionaries we saved in YouTube in the My Dictionaries URL box. Let's close the Settings box. Using the dictionaries here works the same as it did on YouTube, so I won't demonstrate it again. And that wraps up this video. In part 3, we'll take a closer look at LanguageReactor.com's YouTube and Netflix sections. You'll learn all about TurtleTube, which was designed to provide you with content based on your language level. Hope to see you there and subscribe for more!